Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. The cicadas are coming. Some areas of New Jersey are really going to be plagued by the big, noisy bugs. And what's worse, the loud insects attract a dangerous kind of snake. Here's David Wheeler, Executive Director of Conserve Wildlife New Jersey, to explain. Hey, David, thanks so much for your time. Let's start with the cicadas. What's going to happen this year? Uh, so this is, uh, for certain parts of New Jersey, this is that year that uh, every 17-year cycle and Brood 10, or as it's spelled out, Brood X, which just sounds like something from a sci-fi movie, is emerging after uh, 16 years underground. And so this 17th year, we'll get in those certain areas, which are, are kind of dispersed around the state. It's not necessarily one block that you might imagine. Um, you'll get cicadas emerging in what we expect will be very large numbers later in May. And uh, in doing so, they uh, certainly make their presence known through their very loud calls of the, of the males uh, who are attracting females that way. How, how many also, are we talking about? Are we talking about plague-like numbers? Are we talking about blocking out the sun? How many cicadas are we going to see? Um, well, putting a number might be tough, but I will say that there there is the chance for local huge numbers where in very certain smaller areas where you get a, a ton and, and maybe in other places, uh, you know, spread out a bit, not not nearly as impactful. Um, it's always tough to predict in advance uh, other than we know the year. But as to the exact numbers, that that is so variable. Um, but I will say it, it's probably going to be certain places where the sound will be deafening and, and where, you know, for a few weeks, People might get a little annoyed in certain places. Hopefully not too much. So, so annoying um, to us, to yeah. our species, but to other That's species, right. this is this is like a delicacy. This is a smorgasbord. Exactly. Yeah. For 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 people, I mean, we hear the sound, which is about 100 decibels. It's the equivalent of a jackhammer or a uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, for wildlife, though, a, a range of wildlife, this is basically the dinner bell tolling and, and calling them in. And uh and for these species, which which range dramatically, everything from birds to snakes to mammals, um, th this is the equivalent of a fast food buffet. And uh, if, if from a wildlife perspective, cicadas are easy to access. Uh, they're um, they're defenseless, basically. Their only defense is in their large numbers. So individual ones are more or less defenseless, and they're packed with protein and fat. So in many ways, they really are like cicada McNuggets for wildlife species. Well, you, specifically, when you talk about snakes, uh, I know from reading an article that, that you were quoted in, there's two venomous snakes in New Jersey. Do they both like cicadas? Um, rattlesnakes have been less associated with them, but like I would say any snake who, that comes across a cicada would not hesitate to enjoy that meal. Um, copperheads, though, have been have been shown in many places uh, over time to be particularly attracted to them. And, it, and there's not necessarily an exact uh, factor as to why copperheads more than other snakes. And um, rather it's, it's simply that uh, in many cases, copperheads have just been found, uh, you know, really dining on cicadas. And, and I think it's more noteworthy because copperheads are otherwise so reclusive. They're, they're hard to see typically. So I, I think the function of them being seen you know, feasting on cicadas draws attention to the fact that, you know, this is a snake the other 99% of the year we wouldn't even see, even if it's living in our area. Right. What you said is alarming, that uh, they're usually reclusive. That means when the cicadas are out, they are not reclusive? <laughs> uh, to a degree, to a degree. And and I mean, uh, I, you know, to put it into perspective, I mean, for people, first of all, uh, copperheads are found only in the northern reaches of the state, from the Palisades west along the, the New York border, uh, and then down along the Delaware, as far south as as parts of Mercer County, uh, but they prefer wild habitat. Uh, they're they're not looking to live in downtown areas, um, so they want more rugged type habitat, uh, wooded wooded areas. Um, so it's not like ev everybody needs to worry about stepping out into their yard and, and encountering a copperhead just because cicadas are on. But if if you live in the area where both the cicadas are emerging and the copperheads are found. Uh, and you are in that kind of a, a more rugged, uh, remote type of habitat, you do want to be concerned, not concerned, you want to be aware that uh, copperheads could be out there, particularly at night, where you'd be more likely to not see one if you're wandering about in the uh, 
in the, the in a wooded area. So just, you know, keep a, if you did go out at night for whatever reason, keep a flashlight handy and, and just watch where you step if you, you live in that area. Because the only reason they would attack is because of it being defensive, right? They 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 don't look at you as food. They they don't they will they don't normally be attacking a person. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So it's a misnomer among uh, among all snakes. Really, uh, they have that the Hollywood mythology paints them out to be like snakes on a plane or like some of those other movies where they're chasing you down the trail. Uh, it, the reality it couldn't be further from the truth, especially in New Jersey. Uh, where pretty much all of our snakes are, are relatively docile, but our two venomous snakes, the copperhead and the rattlesnake, are especially docile and, and really want nothing to do with us at all. Uh, you know, they see us as a threat. They hear us coming. They, they do their best to hide and get out of the way. Um, so about the only uh, examples we ever have of any kind of incidents are typically when people are going out of their way to chase or capture or otherwise harm the snake, and then there's that defense mechanism kicks in. Can't help noticing the bobcat over your shoulder. <laughs> do we have bobcats in New Jersey? We do. We do. And bobcats are, uh, are, are also found in northern New Jersey. Uh, they are a, a species that was believed to be lost um, from the state back in the, in the 60s. Uh, it turned out a few had hung on, and there was also a small reintroduction in the late 70s and early 80s. And uh, in recent decades, they've made a, a nice comeback. They're still nearly impossible to see in the wild. Um, even you know, hikers and hunters and people who spend years out in the wild in bobcat habitat rarely, if ever, uh, will come across one. But they're out there and, and they're doing well. And uh, they're our only uh, wildcat that we still have in New Jersey and really a symbol of the wilderness. Are so it's protected? exciting. Uh, was are that? They, protected? they are protected, yeah. And, and um, I should mention, uh, not, not only are bobcats on the endangered list here in New Jersey, uh, so they're protected. Uh, but copperheads are a species of special concern. Part of the, the concern with copperheads is that there's, they're so hard to see other than during cicada years. Uh, they're so hard to see that we really are still trying to get a good understanding of just how many are out there. Uh, we, we suspect the relatively low number just because of the, uh, the sightings that, that are reported in are, are just so few compared to most other snake species. Well, I'm not cheering on the copperheads, but it would be nice to see more, bobcat, more <laughs> bobcats. And just like the bald eagle, I mean, that's proof positive that uh, when an animal is protected, it can make a comeback. That's a, yeah, that's a great point. I mean, one of the, uh, the exciting things about New Jersey is it's not a state you typically associate with nature and wildlife. And yet, even in this most densely populated small state, uh, we have wildlife, great stories, like you mentioned, with the bald eagle recovering, the peregrine falcon fastest animal on earth thriving here in New Jersey, the osprey again, you know, being, you can't miss it along the coast this time of year. Uh, so there's some great stories. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I know the copperhead is not one of those uh, cuddly creatures that, that people want to champion, but our organization works to protect all of the, uh, the at-risk species. So I understand uh, it, that might not be shared everywhere. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it, Larry. David Wheeler from Conserve Wildlife New Jersey. Still to come on Jersey Matters, making a profit and doing some good at the same time. We'll tell you how next.